Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. approaches to crime, there is perhaps none more deadly and frightening than that which involves not only the criminal and his intended victim, but an innocent party as well. And it is the innocent that most often suffers when the motive for the crime is revenge. Such was the case in January when Paul Carson put his terrifying plan into action. I'm Vera Randall. Well, good morning. You are Ken Williams. Oh, yeah, that's right. Can I help you? Oh, gosh, I was afraid she wouldn't. Well, well who wouldn't what? Your Aunt Audrey. Your Aunt Audrey? Well, your Aunt Audrey was going to write you. You see, I don't know a soul in town, and she thought that... I feel simply terrible. I certainly had no idea of barging in on you like this. I'm terribly oh, sorry. Oh, no, wait a second, Miss uh, Randall. Vera. Vera. Look, if anybody's embarrassed, it's me, and... Uh, well, it should be Aunt Audrey. Let's blame it on her. I got a few minutes for us to leave for work. Come on in. I've always got time to talk to a pretty girl. Anyway, I haven't seen Aunt Audrey for years. And you know how it is when it comes time to write. I think you're a much more interesting subject than Aunt Audrey. I see you're with the Highway Patrol. Yeah, that's right. That must be awfully exciting. Well, sometimes, I guess, but uh, most of the time it's just plain hard work. Oh, I can't imagine that. I should think you'd be on the move all the time. I figured there's just so much sightseeing that you can do. <laughs> hey, where'd the time go? Oh, I haven't made you late. I hope not. I don't know. Maybe just a little bit. Hey, where are you staying? At the Drake Hotel downtown. Hello, this is Williams. Look, I may be a couple of minutes late. Okay, thanks. Well, how about dinner tomorrow night? You are going to stay in town a few days, aren't you? Oh, that would be wonderful. I'd love it. I'll be here till Sunday. Swell. It's a date, then. And uh, maybe after dinner, a show. I'll be looking forward to it. Now, look, I hope you won't think I'm rude, but uh, oh. I am going to have to be going. Uh, could you wait just a second? I, I, I just want a powder. Just be a minute. Well, you know, if I get fired, you're going to have to buy dinner. Oh, not a chance. But... Felony hit and run, corner of Robler and Maple. Everything's rolling. A witness phoned it in. Sir, what do you do, will you? Well, he isn't in yet, sir. He just called, said he'd be a few minutes late. Oh. Well, uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, okay? Oh, 7. It's perfect. Will you give me a look someplace? I wouldn't delay you another minute. No, I'll, I'll take a walk. The fresh air will do me good. Okay, bye. Bye.
Well, it's not too bad. Anything happening? Oh, hi, Ken. That's a good thing you called in. Guess who's been asking for you? Well, it figures. The one time I'm three minutes late in two years. Good morning, Sleeping Beauty. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, when you hear my story, you're not going to believe a word of it. I uh, probably won't, but try me. Well, my Aunt Audrey in Springfield has a friend. She looked me up this morning. A friend, that is. Uh, so I've got a date for tomorrow night. Extra duty, huh? Yeah, it's kind of tough duty. A redhead, real nice. You know, I don't believe a word you're saying. But, Ken, watch that late stuff next time, will you? Okay, I will. Oh, by the way, did you pass that accident to Robler and Maple? No. No, I take Havenhurst because there's less traffic and less chance of being picked up by the highway patrol when you're late. I'll make a note of that. Anybody hurt? Felony hit and run. Wow. Doesn't make any sense. It was in broad daylight. The guy figured to have witnesses. We got a description of the car and the license number. What, a license number? Should be able to wrap it up in a hurry. Yeah, it'll be right. What? Witness reports just in on that hit and run. We're running a check right now on license and car. We got a complete description. License number 2B683, four-door gray sedan. Hey, that can't be right. Why not? Well, it's my car. My license number. <laughs> Ken, pull up the chair and sit down. I don't know what the deal is. This whole thing just doesn't make sense. This Aunt Audrey's friend, where's she staying? Hey, you're right. She won't have had time to get back there yet, but I can call, leave an emergency message. Have her call me. She's at the drink. I can't, can't take it easy. Sit down. Get me Miss, uh, Miss, what's her name? Vera. Vera Randall. Uh, Vera Randall. She's staying at the drink. Get back to me right away. What's the latest on the Roth case? Anything come in after I left last night? Ah, no, no, nothing yet. Right, we'll get back to it later. What? There's no Vera Randall registered at the Drake. We checked the register for the last month and we checked the reservations. I've still got them on the line. Anything further? No, thanks. I don't get it. Ken, you're under suspension as of now. Let me have your badge. This is all part of regulations, you know that. Level with me, Ken. Do you have anything to do with this? No, nothing. All right, I believe you. You yourself said we could wrap this up real quick. Tell you what, you go down to the locker, get yourself a coat. You're going to travel with me, but as a private citizen. Come on. Will you sit down and relax? You're driving me up the wall. Knock it off. You haven't been living with this thing the way I have. Oh, that's what you think. What do you mean? I mean, don't forget who helped. Don't forget who found out about Aunt Audrey. I could tell you what she eats for breakfast. Look, you've accomplished everything you set out to do. Will you sit down and enjoy it? Accomplished nothing. The wheels have been put in motion, and that's all. Well, I'd like to know what else we can do about it. We can wait. For what? For a witness. Look, we're not sure of anything yet. Ever since that crummy cop got my kid brother, I swore I'd get him. Now, Billy's spending the rest of his life in jail. In jail, Vera, his life. He can't take it. Now, let that cop get a little. Yeah. Well, we sure did it the hard way. Listen, we did it just right. Now, let him sweat. Let him sweat out the rest of his life. Nice trial and nice stiff sentence. Now, let him do some time. That'll mark him. That'll mark him for good. And incidentally, it's the best way for us. Just in case you never thought of it. Now, what does that mean? It means, baby, that nobody's going to trace this operation to us. It's slick, and you know it. Suppose there's no witness. Suppose the cops don't believe he did it, and they, they, they check. Then what happens to your year's wait to throw them off the track? <laughs> That'll be just great. You'll have to do the job again. This doesn't work out, Vera. We'll find another way. That's the victim. The ambulance just left. There's a chance. What about the witness? 
plural, sir. I let the first one go. I got the information. The second witness, a Mrs. Giles, she can help us a lot more. She saw the whole thing. Oh, where is she? Over in the patrol car. Thanks. Oh, Mr. Matthews. Yeah, what? She's pretty shaken up, sir. Okay, I understand. I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I've, I've heard about these things, but I've never seen anything like it. Mrs. Giles, I know you're very upset, but please, tell us everything that happened. Well, I catch the 757 bus on the corner every morning of my life on my way to work. I work for the Mansfield Investment Company. I'll have been with them eight years, the sixth of next month. Yes, of course, I understand now. Mrs. Giles... While you were waiting for the bus, what happened? Well, while I was waiting for the bus, I glanced up the street, as you do, and I, I noticed this gray car traveling terrifically fast down the inside lane. Oh, that poor man. Mrs. Giles, please. Uh, we need your help very badly. I'm sorry. Well, the poor man was crossing the street, and the car came tearing down on the outside lane. It, it was almost as if I knew it was going to happen, like... Like he was aiming for him, you might say. But he even seemed to kind of speed up as he got a little closer. Did you see the actual accident? Well, yes, Mr. Matthews, I did. Do you think there's a chance a driver didn't see the man crossing the street? Well, that's just it. That's the part of it I don't understand. There was nothing to obstruct his view. He had to have seen him. Well, thanks very much. You've given us a description of the car and the plates. But before we go, is there anything else you can tell us? Well, yes, like I told the officer, the, the driver was wearing some kind of uniform. A uniform? Yes, a uniform like his. By midday on that January morning, the head of the highway patrol had already started to put into motion all means at his disposal to solve the terrifying crime. A crime which threatened to take not only the life of an innocent victim, but also was calculated to destroy the very existence of Sergeant Ken Williams. Sit down, Ken. It looks like it's a frame. You're the pigeon. We gotta find out who and why, so let's start with who. Oh, in our business, it could be a whole lot of people. I wouldn't know where to begin. This is no five and ten cent operation, Ken. This is something much more important than that. Must be somebody with a worse kind of grudge. Something where I was a real important spoke in the wheel. Dennis. Yes, sir? Pull the file on Sergeant Williams. Get me every case he's been on in the past year. Better make that two years. Right. I hope it leads to something. I hope so, too. I've seen messy deals in my time, but this one takes the door prize. Somebody's out to get you, and they take an innocent victim along with him. What his whole thing sticks. Paul. What are you so buggy about? The papers don't come out till three o'clock. Then you can start worrying if everything doesn't go right. Don't preach. Shall I call the car rental? What for? To tell them to pick up the car, that's what for. What time does the train leave? The same time it always leaves, at five o'clock. Say, we could pick a paper up at the station. No, we can't. If this little deal doesn't work out, we're not leaving. Maybe you're not, buddy. But little Vera's leaving at 5 o'clock sharp. Vera does what I tell her. Nothing, huh? Okay, thanks. Well, the lab reports no sign of illegal entry to your car. Who else has keys, Ken? Not a soul. Look, where do you leave it unlocked? That is, unlocked long enough for somebody to have a duplicate set made. I don't. I never leave it unlocked. Got a habit of locking it. Yeah, it's a good habit, too. Look, if they're smart enough to get your car back to the garage a couple of minutes before you go to work, they're smart enough to know the rest of your habits, too. Like what? What do you mean? Like places where you parked your car where you had to leave the keys. Well, lately, I've been so beat, I've been staying home. Hey, wait a minute. What? Saturday. I had a luncheon date at the Tamashanta restaurant. How long were you there? About an hour, I guess. That's a long shot. We'll go out and check it. It's the only thing we've got to work on, Ken. Come on, let's go. Uh, this is Mrs. Chandler. Yes, we'll be leaving on the 5 o'clock train. You can pick the car up any time after that. Oh, yes, we had a wonderful time. Thank you. Bye. Well, that's that. I'm pretty sure everything is working all right. 
Sure it is, Paul. Then we'll see. I'm going out to get the afternoon papers. It's just about that time. Paul, be careful. Of what? show as much. We better check the whole area. Yeah, there's nothing on the way here. Might as well look up ahead. Yeah. Keys, mate. Come on, let's try it. Hello, may I help you? I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Well, I hope you didn't lock yourself out of your car. I wish it was that simple. You do a big business in car keys? Some. Mostly house keys. Why? Did you ever copy one like that? Yes, lots. Why? There was a crime committed with a duplicate car key. It was duplicated last Saturday, I think. Sometime between noon and one o'clock. This is important. Can you come up with anything for us? Well, I might have. I do a big business Saturday. I usually do. But uh, could you tell me something about the customer? Well, you see, that's what we want from you. Yeah, well, there was a guy in here. I think it's about that time, too. He was in kind of a hurry. Yeah, the key was just like this one, I think. Of course, I don't pay much attention when... Yeah, I know, I know. Keys are keys. And what else? Yeah, the key I made wasn't for the car he was driving. It, it was for his wife's. Uh, she was outside in the car. His wife? Well, I guess it was his wife. Might have been his girlfriend. Anyhow, she, she was sure pretty. Was she a redhead? About 5'5"? Five, five. Yeah, she was redhead. I never did see her get out of the car. All right, Mr... Uh... Sloan. Mr. Sloan, could you identify this guy from a picture? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could. Would you mind coming out to headquarters? You know, I think you have the key to the whole situation. That is, if you'll pardon the expression. Be glad to. Sammy, take over. I'll be in a couple of hours. Paid off. The whole idea, the waiting, the planning, the whole idea. You mean he's hooked? We've got a witness? Like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, we made the first page of the second section. Some woman named Giles saw the whole thing. Nothing like having an honest witness at the scene of the crime. Well, I gotta hand it to you, Paul. It worked like a charm. Oh, I swore I'd get even, Vera, and I did. Well, we've got the motive for the crime, but not the guy that did it. It was revenge. Well, these mug shots, well, I'll show you guys that are desperate enough by criminal standards to try and pull it. That's him. No. Not a chance, Mr. Sloan. He was sent up for life a year ago. I testified in the case myself. Gee, I don't understand it. it. Looks enough like that guy to be his brother. Look, you don't think... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. His brother, his brother. Remember the trial, Ken? Yeah, wasn't his brother a racketeer? Did a little time himself. Can we check him out? Get Dennis on it right away. Well, thanks, Mr. Sloan. Looks like I hit it right on the nose. Okay. Exciting, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Looks like we're getting some action.
That's Vera. Yeah, sure, it's Vera. Where do we go from here? An APB on Paul Carson. Have the dispatchers check every car rental outfit in the area. Car rental? Look, you've been tagged four ways from the ace. According to the teletype, they came by plane, so they had to have wheels. I'll get a description from Sloan. Two and two is beginning to make four. Well, come on. I'll sure feel better when we're on the train. You got a problem? No problem. I just feel better. Well, let's go. It's about that time right now. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for your cooperation. I think we've got something, sir. Yeah? A car answering the description of Carson's vehicle was rented two days ago by Mr. Paul Chandler. What else? Well, the rental people said they received a call from Mrs. Chandler to pick the car up at the train station any time after 5 o'clock. After 5, huh? It's almost 5 now. Is there a car in the vicinity? Well, none closer than here. All right, have Garvey meet me out front with the car. Right away. You want to take a ride, Ken? That was a stupid question. Come on, let's wait over there. We don't want to be obvious. Why are you so nervous? I thought you said there was nothing to worry about. I did, and there isn't. We're less conspicuous over here. When the train pulls in, we pull out. Meanwhile, we wait. I'm sorry, Paul. Just these last few minutes... Knock it off! Got nothing to worry about. You know, I'll bet you anything that hit and run victim is dead by now. Oh, cut it out, Paul. Yes, sir. Looks like that cop, or whoever it was who did it, is in for some real trouble. Stop it, Paul. Paul, I think I hear it. It must be my train. Wait a minute. Wait till the train is in the station. Paul. It's the highway. There's only one place to go. One way out. The train. You cover the other side. You stay with me, Ken. Right. Just another second. Then we walk. Slowly. There goes her and her boyfriend. Hold it, Carson! your boyfriend. All you have to do is worry about a hit and run victim this morning. I knew it wouldn't work. And you were so right. You want to know something, Ken? What's that? Your Aunt Audrey's relatives are creeps. Here, here's your badge. Go out and catch somebody. See Highway Patrol next week. Until then, remember, leave your blood at the Red Cross or your community blood bank, not on the highway. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.